Hey, what's up, everybody? It's J-Rock right here. Today, we're going to be reviewing a comic book from the Valiant Universe. So, if you like that type of content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way, you can stay updated on more of the same. Okay, we're going to be reviewing a book called Rapture. This was written by Matt Kent with colorist Andrew Dahlhouse and artist Kafu. This story was written back in October of 2017. Okay, so the story starts off where Tama is on the dead side. Now you're thinking, she's a 12-year-old girl, so you're like, what's a little girl like that doing in a place like this? For those of you unfamiliar with the series of Shadow Man, dead side is like their imp interpretation of hell. It's basically like it's like a fantasy world where nothing makes sense, all kinds of creepy creatures and demons and so forth. Some, something um, Freddy Krueger would be at in the movies, right? And then you have this place called the live side, which is kind of like their interpretation of heaven. And then you have earth. So they bounce back and forth through realms or through universes or whatever you want to call these places. Now, um, she's a geomancer. She has the geomancer book. Hence why she could bounce back and forth through these universes. So in the beginning, she meets this one guy that makes her solve this riddle. If she doesn't solve it, she'll be trapped in dead side forever so on and so on she quickly solves the riddle because she read so many books she has a lot of knowledge the next step is she meets this big giant creature named amy now we get a little backstory on on that creature why it's trapped in this little area she's getting uh, the team together she's the one setting up the team looking for every character and so forth because they're telling her this story amy's telling her this story about how she got trapped in this area because uh, she lost this battle and uh, she got overthrown by this character named Babel. Now, you know like the Tower of Babel? Now, it turns out the Tower of Babel isn't just a tower, it's a person. So this person is like kind of someone that reigns in hell. Then we get introduced to this other character. He's kind of like a Conan ripoff. His name's Rex. So Rex has been fighting off all these demons in hell for a long time. And now Babel's finally overthrowing them. And that's where the story starts, where she's there to meet up with him and to try to help him, right? She's trying to help him along because he's being overrun. He's outnumbered. He's, he's going to need some help. So she forms this team with the characters I just mentioned earlier. She gets them together. They all agree to help. They come back to uh, the dead side. With Shadow Man, he was the only one a little, like, iffy. Like, he kind of didn't want to go to the dead side because he knows all about it. He's been there, done that, and... He didn't really want no part of it. But at the end, he ends up uh, tagging along. He ends up giving in. He ends up giving in and he ends up going with them. Because if they don't uh, defeat this Babel guy, what he's planning to do is he's going to destroy both the dead side and the real world. Because he's going to tear a hole in the center of the universe. And that's going to destroy both places. Okay, so that's basically issue one. Issue one was getting the team together, introducing you to other characters. The pacing on this, I thought Mackin did a real good job um, keeping things flowing. There was never really a dull moment, but in doing so, there isn't really big character moments when you do that. But this being a four-issue miniseries, you don't have a lot of character development. Now, once uh, issue one ends, they get the team together. Issue two, now you get introduced to Babel himself, and, and you get the backstory on Rex, the Conan ripoff, right? You get uh, his backstory of why he's in the dead side fighting this battle and so forth. Kind of a sad story. And they switch up the art for this. They really change it into some like dull, sepia type of uh, cut, uh, artwork with this um, hue colors. So I think switching the artwork for this, the whenever they're telling a story in the past they, or they're using memories, you switch artists, which I think that's a great idea. That way you know you separate the present time from um, from the past, right? And it also, seeing as how the story is kind of very, like, it drags you down and so forth, the fact that they changed it to this other art, I think it fits it very well. It really adds to the mood. Because you know in um, comics, you don't got music, you don't got um, sound effects to, to help you, like in film, where that adds to the mood of the scene. In comics, you rely heavily on the colors, to do that and on the art as well but i i feel like it's more of the colors' job because colors can be moody they can set the moods and this does a good job doing that so you get the story of rex and you get the story of babel of how this conflict 
came to be. That's basically issue two. Then we get all that out the way. You know what the conflicts are. You know what the, who the players and the story are. I don't want to go step by step through the whole story. So I just gave you a vague idea of what's cracking. And now we just get straight to the to the main part when we're getting uh basically Babel. He uh he releases all these demons. It looks like something out of the movie Ghostbusters. All these ghosts. I think they're Laos. They're called Laos. And a Shadow Man has his own Lao, right? So he has his own Lao. They go fight these guys in a little battle before the main battle type of thing. While all this is going down, shit's popping off. And somehow Shadow Man ends up disappearing. Now it's, it's important to know Shadow Man is an entity. Meaning it's not always the same character playing Shadow Man, right? Shadow Man is just like a spirit or something, a Lao. And then here the OG Shadow Man is called Jack Boniface. Now, in the beginning of the series, they changed it to this other protagonist. And on this uh, particular miniseries, it's back to the original Shadow Man being Jack Boniface. Now, to know how we went from point A to point B, I will have to read the stuff in between, which we'll do one day. But right now, let's just concentrate on this miniseries. Okay, so they take him, right? And they tell him, you're the most powerful Shadow Man, so-and-so. You have a very powerful Lao, meaning like this ghost spirit thing. And uh, they want to convince them to help rain in hell. You know, you can help rain in hell. And once you do this, you'll get rid of your Lao and you can live a normal life. So he's led to believe. So he's like, okay, I'll help you guys. He's going to be the sacrifice. So this concentrates more on him. He's kind of the main player out of all the characters on the team. He's the main one. And, and uh, he gets the most character growth here. Now it turns out, of course, it's the villain. He's manipulating them. Then the heroes show up right in time, right before he, he's there being crucified. And they let him know, yo, yo, that ain't the business. Uh, they're going to destroy Earth as well. Like, you're not just going to go back and live a normal life. Like, the both, both planets will be messed with, you know what I mean? So, he comes to his senses and he realizes that, that they're telling him the truth. And then, he uh, tries to... Oh, hell breaks Hell breaks loose. Once he starts resisting, his Lao comes out and I, uh, he formed a stronger bond with it than even the bond he had before. So he's just smashing on people, right? He got his Lao going. Babel has like three or four Lao. So now his Laos are fighting. His spirits are fighting against some um, Shadow Man spirits. You get some awesome fight scenes here. Gotta give it up to the artist here, Kafu. He did a great job portraying action. And even the colors, the way the Laos are, I think they depend heavily on the colors. You can kind of make them look ghost-like. So when all this is, is uh, all hell's breaking loose, uh, water rains from the skies. And it's not like rain, it's like tsunami. And it just lands on everybody like a great big wave. And it just completely destroys the actual physical Tower of Babel. It just breaks and it's falling while everybody's fighting, right? So it definitely has that big action scene. That you would see in a summer blockbuster. Okay, so all in all, I thought the characters were a bit one-dimensional. Everybody had their thing, and uh, but they didn't have depth or anything. Again, it was just a four-issue miniseries. So it was just flying through the story and a lot of action. So I read through this pretty quick. Like, it wasn't dialogue heavy, but it wasn't light on the dialogue either. It was just perfect. The balance, the pacing was all gravy. The story itself, I felt it didn't have a lot of meat to it. It was just, you know, um, a means to go from point A to point B, give the, the squad something to do. Uh, it was a big scale situation though, because this was a, uh, you know, the whole world depends on, on you succeeding type of mission. So yeah, needless to say, the stakes were high on this one. I thought the action was cool, flowed very well. The story itself was mediocre. The action scenes were dynamic, the art was great, the coloring was great. Um, my main problem was the story wasn't the most interesting and the characters were kind of one dimensional. They were, everything was straightforward as far as characters and story. Although it was fun all the way through. They even tried to crack a few jokes, you know, they tried to throw a few puns in there. All in all, is this a must read? Uh, no, I don't think this is a must read. Although the ending, I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's pretty cool the way they explain how everything went down. It's very interesting. I found it kind of fun. Oh, well, you know what? Actually, I take that back. If you're following Shadow Man, kind of well, he did get some character growth here. 
So what happens to him here, it might affect his story going forward. But for everybody else, I, if you're following one of the other series, you could kind of skip it. Uh, would I recommend it? Fun reading it and I think you will enjoy it. It wasn't very superhero capes and so forth. If, you're, if that's what you're looking for, you might want to look elsewhere. Because I think this concentrated more on the supernatural and on like fantasy. So uh, if you like that type of stuff, you're definitely going to enjoy this one. All in all, I'm going to probably give it, you know, somewhere around a 6.5 out of 10. You know, it's run of the mill, nothing fantastic, but it's not terrible by any means. All right, I hope you guys like what you saw. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. Other than that, you know, um, I appreciate everybody that watched this video. It really does help. And I'll check you guys out next time.